Welcome to an example on how to solve a Bernoulli differential equation. A Bernoulli differential equation is in the form of dy dt plus p of t times y equals f of t times y raised to the power of n. So notice how the given differential equation is in the correct form and n is equal to positive two. To solve a Bernoulli differential equation, step one, we substitute using the equation v equals y raised to the power of one minus n. We solve the resulting linear first order differential equation and after solving for v, we determine the solution to the original differential equation, which will be y of t, and then we'll also find the particular solution using the initial condition y of one equals one. So the first step will be using the equation v equals y raised to the power of, again, one minus n. In this case, it would be one minus two, so we have v equals y raised to the power of negative one, if we want, one over y. Now we need to solve this equation for y because we'll perform a substitution for y as well as dy dt. So if v is equal to one over y, then y is equal to one over v. Or if we want, y is equal to v raised to the power of negative one. And now we need to find dy dt. To find dy dt though, we'll have to use the chain rule Remember, dy dt would be equal to dy dv times dv dt. So dy dt is equal to, dy dv would be equal to negative one times v to the negative two, or negative v to the negative two, and then times dv dt, well if we want we could write this as negative one over v squared dv dt. So now we'll make these substitutions into the original differential equation. So again, dy dt is equal to negative one over v squared times dv dt. Then we'll have plus four divided by t times y, y is equal to v to the negative one equals, on the right side, we'll have t to the third times y squared would be the square of v to the negative one, which would be v to the negative two. Now we have a linear first order differential equation, but our next step is to write this in the correct form. For review, we want the differential equation to be in this form here, where in our case we'd have dv dt plus p of t times v equals f of t. So to put the differential equation in the correct form, let's multiply through by negative v squared. Simplifying on the left, we have dv dt. Here we're going to have minus four divided by t times v equals, on the right side we'll just have negative t cubed. Let's continue solving this on the next slide. Again, we have the differential equation in this form here now. So to solve this linear first order differential equation for v, we'll now find the integrating factor mu of t, which is equal to e raised to the power of the integral of p of t dt, where p of t is the function of t in this term here. So notice p of t is equal to negative four divided by t. So mu of t, the integrating factor, is equal to e, raise the power of the integral of negative four divided by t dt, which is equal to e raised to the power of negative four natural log absolute value of t. Though we can drop the absolute value here because we were told t is greater than zero. To simplify here though, we'll apply the power property of logarithms. So we'll take the negative four and move it to the exponent on the t. So this is equal to e raised to the power of natural log t raised to the power of negative four. And this simplifies again because we have base e here and the exponent is natural log, which is log base e. So this simplifies to t raised to the power of negative four. So mu of t, the integrating factor, is equal to t raised to the power of negative four. So now we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by t to the negative four. And write the differential equation in this form here. So we have t to the negative four dv dt minus four divided by t times t to the negative four times v equals t to the negative four 
times negative two to the third. Let's go ahead and simplify here and here. So we have two to the negative four dv dt. Here we'd have negative four t to the negative five v equals, here we'll have negative t to the negative one. And now the left side is a derivative of the product of mu of t and y, or in this case mu of t and v. So this left side equals a derivative with respect to t of mu of t, which is t to the negative four and v. Of course we can check this. To find this derivative we'd apply the product rule. So we'd have the first function t to the negative four times derivative of the second function with respect to t, which is dv dt, and then plus the second function, which is v, times derivative of the first function with respect to t, which would be negative four t to the negative five. So this does verify this difference is the derivative of this product. And we have negative t to the negative one on the right. And now the next step is integrate both sides of the equation. So we have the integral of the derivative with respect to t of t to the negative four v dt equals the integral of negative t to the negative one dt. On the left side here, the integral and derivative undo each other and we're left with t to the negative four v and we'll include the constant of integration on the right side. So on the right side, the integral of negative t to the negative one, which is negative one over t, is negative natural log absolute value of t plus c. But again, we can drop the absolute value because t is greater than zero. So to solve for v, we'd multiply both sides by t to the fourth. So we'd have t to the fourth times t to the negative four v equals t to the fourth times negative natural log. Let's drop the absolute value. So we have v equals negative t to the fourth natural log t plus c t to the fourth. Now remember, we're trying to solve this for y, not v. So now we'll perform a substitution for v and then solve for y. If we go way back to the first slide, remember, v is equal to one over y. So we'd have one over y equals negative t to the fourth natural log t plus c t to the fourth. So if we take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation, we'd have y equals one over, let's write this as c t to the fourth minus t to the fourth natural log t. So this would be the general solution to the differential equation, but we're asked to find the particular solution using the initial condition y of one equals one. So if y of one equals one, we we'll substitute one for t, one for y, and find the value of c. So that would give us the equation one equals one divided by c times one to the fourth minus one to the fourth times natural log one. Well, natural log one is equal to zero. So this just gives us one equals one divided by c, so c equals one. Which means the particular solution to the Bernoulli differential equation is y of t equals one divided by the quantity t to the fourth minus t to the fourth natural log t. Before we go, let's check this graphically. The blue slope field is generated by the given differential equation and the point one comma one is this point here given by the initial condition and in red we see the graph of y of t our particular solution to the differential equation. Notice how it fits nicely in the slope field and it passes through the point one comma one, verifying our solution is correct. I hope you found this helpful.